So a pretty amazing opening day of the Billabong Pro Tahiti, starting off with John John Florence, who really turned the tables out here, doing some big turns like that one. Huge hook off the top, big bottom turn, throwing the fins, getting a big 8.17 to get this thing underway. Big slam on that inside section, also packing the tube run. Yeah, got himself a 9.17 on this wave. Just wrestled the foam ball and was able to punch through the curtain. Right at the end of this ride, a 9.17, a huge heat score total, and moving on through to round three. Taj Burrow then took the lineup, and he also had to do some big fans like that off the top. Another big carve out in front for Taj to take out Damian Hobgood and Dusty Payne. Hobgood did turn the heat at the end, but his last effort right here for Taj Burrow was able to seal the deal, and he moved on into round three. Yeah, chasing down the 4.83. The score he required to move into the third round. Then we moved right on in to heat number three where we saw a bit of an upset. Taylor Knox getting barreled here. He was uh, not the favorite in this one by any means. World number one, Mick Fanning, end up having to surf again in the second round a little bit later. Adriano D'Souza in the fourth heat of the day. Probably the performance of the contest so far. Adriano just putting himself in exactly the right place, getting him through himself through some very deep barrels and riding over the foam ball on that occasion. Started begging for some tens from the panel early on in this one. Then Joel Parkinson took to the lineup. Real effortless approach here. Spent a lot of time in the tube. Clean lines onto the open face for Joel Parkinson. Easily taking this win over Kai Otten and Ricardo DeSantos and moving on to round three. Great performance from Joel Parkinson in the uh, third position on the ratings coming into this event and just looking really relaxed out here. Super flowy onto this inside section, made it look so effortless. Then we saw Kelly Slater, the defending champ, just follow suit from what he did last year. Pulled into this first wave, turned it into a score. He made it look consistent and left his competitors, Travis Logie and Alain Ryu, chasing him throughout this matchup. Yeah, pretty solid heat score title from Kelly of 16. And as you say, getting the jump on two, uh, two of... The, probably the form competitors out here. And then we moved into Josh Curry. He made the semis last year. We're hoping he's going to do big things. Look at that one. Big backside tube. He's able to punch out of that curtain. Packs another one right here. Let's go of the rail. Sets it again. But, Ron, the real cool part of this heat was that he ends up checking out a rare right-hander and gets a double tube vision here. Yeah, 6.87 on this ride. A double barrel. He, uh, he finds his way out of the first one. And, uh, as you said, squeaks into another barrel just on the shallow reef inside section. Then we saw Ace Buck in one of the best goofy footers on tour, look real loose and lively through that first section, got a great section to open up for him right out in front in this matchup against Jordy Smith and Kieran Perot. Yeah, that is a really tough draw out here, and Ace got the job done charging on this wave, but didn't punch through. Possibly a contender for the WTA award that wave. A big contender, but look at this one. He gets another opportunity, cool glide, finds the exact, comes out with the spit, and he took a big win there in the opening round, moving on to round three, making it look so effortless. Recovered well from breaking a board in that heat, Adrian Buck. And this was Owen Wright in what was a pretty low-scoring heat for Owen in heat nine of round one. Big wrap out the back here. He started off without really seeing much from Alejo Muniz or Yaden Nickel, and it was just Owen Wright just getting these couple of waves back-to-back, -back, a six and a four, and then the next thing you know, he was able to take the heat and made it look pretty effortless. In heat number 10, Matt Wilkinson and Ator Alves had a pretty, uh, pretty close tussle. This was Wilco's best ride, this one. Uh, but he couldn't find a backup. Aitor Alves pinched the win with a low uh, heat score total of 9.5 to move through to heat, uh, round three. Sorry. And Julian just with really not a whole lot at all in that matchup. Aitor taking the win, then moving on to Gabriel Medina. The superstar had a lot of attention on this heat and looked like he is so comfortable out here in his first performance ever in Tahiti. Yeah, he looked fantastic. He's, uh, he's made an appearance, as you said. And look at him. He just thread this barrel beautifully. A really good read on it. He, he got himself nice and deep in the barrel and as a result got himself some pretty big scores. Real cool grab rail down carve to finish that one off and then Medina driving through this inside section. He was able to stand straight up through that section. A huge moment for Gabriel Medina. It really even gets a little rip off the top on the inside section showing why he's going to be tough to beat. Yeah, here it is from the water angle, as you said, standing straight up, just uh, feeling 
the, the width of that tube there, Gabriel Medina, and letting go of a nice carve as he came out of the tube. The, the last heat of the first round on paper was probably the heat of the day. We saw this man, CJ Hobgood, go up against Jeremy Flores and Fred Patasia. So great to see this matchup. That big roundhouse cutback really excited us when it went down throughout the day. We saw CJ just pick the right waves, got a little punt just to kick it out. He looked like he just had a lot more energy, but the thing was, Jeremy got a solid score here. Yeah, he really narrowed the gap, Jeremy, and and uh, wasn't chasing a huge score in the final stages. Great backhand tube style. But uh, even Freddie P got himself a nice little tube towards the end. Freddie P, we always put him as a huge threat here. He'll be a huge guy to answer against in round two when he surfs again, unable to come back against CJ Hobgood. Then we uh, saw another nice backhand tube approach from Jeremy Flores throughout this matchup. Love and watching Jeremy surf out here. He was fantastic in 2011, and it looks like 2012 is going to be no different. Have a look at that style. So perfect in positioning. You know he's fearless. He got the AI award last year. He, again, is going to be tough to beat in round two. Got into the second round. World number one, Mick Fanning, really opened up with a series of eights. He got three in a row. Looked like everything was going in his favor. Just right in sequence, back to back to back. And then the next thing you know, we thought Alain Ryu might be eliminated and all of a sudden, he was able to climb back into this one with a near-perfect wave, a 9.8 here. One of the best tubes of the day. You can see towards the end of this barrel, he comes over that foam ball section. The nose of his board kicks up a little bit. That was an incredible ride. Let's take a, uh, a look at now Ricardo De Santos in heat two of round number two. Ricardo De Santos gets drawing first blood right at the start with this first opening tube ride against Jordy Smith. The trials winner had uh, his back against the wall for just a moment. Jordy got an eight here. Yeah, this was an incredible barrel, but Jordy just could not find the backup score he needed. And this was the one that made the difference. Ricardo De Santos taking the big win, eliminating Jordy Smith and moving on to the next one. It's going to be a big day tomorrow as we kick off round two action. Make sure you tune in.